the really interesting transformations um, are actually human ones. Um, and again, that sounds a little bit grandiose, but it's for real, okay? So, so the first thing I did when I joined two and a half years ago, and it was a disastrous statement, so bear with me. I, we were doing an all-hands, we, we ran one in India, one in um, uh, Mexico, and one in the UK. And the line I used was the following one. My vision, my grand vision, is that we will use machines for machine work and people for people work. And half my team then just polished their CVs thinking they were out of a job. They were incredibly threatened by the idea of that this is all, all a push to optimizing and, mm -hmm. uh, and reducing cost. And of course, the, the much more sophisticated, more exacting, and more real piece there is, I don't want to hire all this incredible intellect and then having, having, using it for really dumbass things. And if I yep. look at how we develop our models and our, our analytics, so much of it becomes a little bit repetitious, it's, it's, it's inefficient, and I want to um, use the machines and the modeling that we do there to run that side of the business and then lift up our people to look further into the future and really improve what we're doing. And then the other piece of, which is also a human transformation, which is, again, mispositioned, it sounds threatening, which is just making our resources fungible. You know, mm -hmm. we, we have this extraordinary distributed team around the world, and I'm trying to break desperately with our clients the connection to, I'm a client, I'm sitting in North America, therefore I expect to see my team in my office to, you're a client of ours, why wouldn't you want to harness all the expertise of the 1,200 people that work for me around the world in every continent? Mm -hmm. And yeah. one of the, the interesting side effects of changing working patterns over the last six months is that message is finally beginning to land because the addiction to seeing people face to face has frankly been broken out of necessity. And now people are seeing this extraordinary um, um, lifeblood of, of skills that are being harnessed from um, North America, from Scandinavia, from India, Asia, etc. So that's the other, the other piece. And then the last one, and this is the real, um, I guess, you know, it's slightly um, esoteric piece, which is some of the research science that we do stops being um, simply how many more carrots should you put on the sh your shelf or how should you price your chocolate bar? It actually moves into the psychology of how people make decisions. And our behavioral psychology work that we do, um, and we sponsor a number of PhDs and we publish papers. In fact, we just won a prize in a very, a very significant journal on some of the work we did on topic modeling, um, is right on the edges of exploring how we make decisions as humans and not just to be harnessed for you know, uh, uh, selling more stuff, but to really change the experience of a consumer to, mm -hmm. um, and fit how we make decisions to what they buy, rather than forcing them to buy and then make them make a decision. Mm -hmm.